Hello my soccer universe. Finally I'm getting back to France and the Netherlands. I actually was about to do one uh, earlier this week and then I saw nah, this, the French round hadn't quite finished, although it would have been nice to talk about the cup final. Also the weekend in the Eredivisie was quite big, but then I decided now I have anyway so many things to on my plate um, and potentially the Eredivisie could be decided by Thursday morning and then we have also a nice full French round that it makes sense to postpone it a little bit yes I'm not entirely happy with it because I think it would have been better to talk fresh about especially the Saturday in the Eredivisie or Sunday in the Eredivisie because it, w it was really going up and down it seemed like the title race might be fully back on and then it all tipped Ajax's way which I am not unhappy about. I'm also quite happy I'm wearing them that Nantes won the French Cup. Uh, not only because I really like Nantes, but also they beat Nice and I don't yet have a Nice jersey. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how well it would fit in. It would fit very well in here because, you know, all my French teams, with the exception of Monaco, are either blue, red or white. And then we have Nantes too make the little sparkly and then on the Dutch side it doesn't look much better although there are so many colorful Dutch teams in there. In any case we have a few things to talk about and so I think I let's go right in and let's start uh, with the French Cup final. No we're going a little bit not non-chronologically -chron difficult word um, but I think it's uh, that's one highlight. I mean the game itself I only saw the highlights uh, it was not the greatest of games from what I could tell. And the winning uh, goal came from a penalty, which was from a handball that, yes, by the letter of the law, it is a penalty, but it felt a little bit, yeah, so and so. However, I think overall not probably deserved the win. Uh, nice only had, uh, from what I could get, I only laid a few chances. I mean, very early on, but that not was overall the better team. And so Nantes win their first trophy since uh, 2000, when I think they won the double. And ever since it has been... Uh, very much down and a, a few ups so uh, I am very very happy that not uh, could pull it off the winning penalty come from uh, Blas and so not your French Cup winners and they will be playing in the Europa League so that's also rather exciting uh, in France of course uh, sometimes with those you get it all over the place as for league uh, uh, I think one of I mean it doesn't matter any, any, anymore. But PSG twice lost a two-goal lead late on, so uh, their woes continue. And a season that ended in a championship actually can, must be considered a failure, which is staggering to say. Uh, they were 1-0 down at Strasbourg, um, uh, then came back with Mbappé, I think, scoring a brace. Uh, yes, uh, uh, to have a 3-1 lead and then uh, they get a late, late equalizer in a 3-3 draw. Um, not uh, exciting 2-2 draw. Uh, Saint-Etienne still was in a little bit of relegation trouble, losing 2-0 to Rennes, who were looking forward to, uh, you know, secure a European spot at that point. Uh, and then uh, two big results on the bottom, Nice beating Bordeaux, Bordeaux in real trouble and a massive club like Bordeaux is in real uh, danger of being relegated as we will see at the end and then uh, the good side of Lyon showed up in Marseille and just went there and uh, yes the result was rather lopsided. I think the game was not as lopsided. Uh, it was a 3-0, but uh, especially the second two goals came relatively late uh, at a time when uh, Marseille was really pressing for an equalizer. Also, you know, Europa League played a little bit into that one as well. But uh, you gotta say it. I mean, Lyon sometimes can play brilliantly and other times are just an utter disgrace. And this time the brilliant side show, show showed up. But uh, it's never far for Lyon to uh, do the other thing. Uh, so at that very point, there was still um, the uh, PSG, uh, of course, qualified for the Champions League, Marseille looking really, really safe for that uh, Champions League spot. And then the third place, uh, Adam had still uh, ran in the driver's seat thanks to a superior goal difference, but Monaco, of course, have, have having a say in it. And Nice, Strasbourg uh, kind of fighting for uh, the last European sports course, not uh, as we saw, won the cup final and got in there. On the bottom, I think this is almost more exciting. Um, Bordeaux and Metz. 
do not look good at all. And Sun San Etienne kind of probably has to play as a relegation, although uh, Clermont Foot and Lorient could be implement in, uh, in, uh, yeah, could be drawn into that as well. So then let's go over uh, the last round. A huge result for Monaco, beating Lille 2-1 putting loads of pressure on Ren at this point, who uh, desperately needed to win this. Uh, Lyon, I said, Metz, last place Nets beat Lyon 3-2, who just had beaten Marseille. Go figure, but though 4-1 at Angers, it really does not look good. Uh, Marseille, 3-0 at Lorient, more or less cementing again their place up, up there in PSG again. A 2-0 lead over Troyes, cannot hold on. And then uh, it was yes in the evening. Nice 4-2 was at the end, so Saint also not safe yet. And Nice um, kind of making a claim for European spot. But the big one was not against the Rennes. Nantes, who just had won the cup, and this tells you how much a uh, lift such a title win can give you, that even though Rennes had loads of time to prepare for this uh, rather fierce rivalry, they even go up uh, in the 32nd, uh, but just before they have cool Koulibaly can equalize for Nantes. And then it's a 71st minute uh, Paloa winner that spells trouble for Rennes because a win would have played huge dividends for them but as it stands Rennes suddenly fall all the way down Nice get ahead of Rennes so Rennes uh, have to actually be uh, shaking or you know wondering whether they even will finish up in a European spot after this wonderful season that they have but it is really really tight Marseille Looking still quite good. I mean, I must say it's quali quali qualified fight for Europe, uh, but at the moment it's Monaco in third, Nice in fourth, uh, Rennes in fifth, and there's Strasbourg in there as well. So uh, within five points, two rounds to play, um, there is a potential for those teams to go uh, in there. But as I said, on the bottom, it looks like it is decided, but not quite yet. Mets, three, um, Bordeaux, I would say, are down. Still cannot. This, uh, this to me, uh, when I bought the first French jerseys outside of PSG, I went for Bordeaux and Marseille because those are the two, uh, two really, really big teams that I thought, yeah, they will serve me a long while. And then Bordeaux, go away. This is massive to me. This is a massive, massive relegation. Uh, and I know that Bordeaux had a heap of trouble with ownership and, and so on. This is a team that has to play in... Uh, among the top teams in France. Uh, this is a team that cannot get relegated. It's, it's, uh, to me, this is almost worse than uh, when we're talking that Everton got relegated. So this is a, a massive, massive. But this also speaks a little bit of how the French league tipped, uh, typically are. But uh, Metz, I think, has an outside shot of overtaking Saint-Étienne. Uh, Saint-Étienne also seemed very cemented because, you know, three points. Yes, it's six games. But Lorient, we gotta see. Lorient at a time it looked like they are going down. They might just as well survive. Uh, and let's uh, look at the next round. Lorient have to go to Bordeaux. Probably they can seal the fate of Bordeaux. Um, what are other uh, signs that they have, have to play against Reims? So you see their Mets have to play against Angers. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a give and take. As for the European spot, Rennes against Marseille, not an easy game for Rennes at all. Uh, whereas Monaco have to play against Brest. I got Brest could maybe give some uh, Breton uh, assistance, although I don't think this will happen given the rivalry between those teams as well. Nice have to play at Lille, which uh, you would think is an easy one um, um but you would not have thought so at the beginning of the season but you know nice the coach is of course the one that uh led lille to the title next uh last season okay let's go to the netherlands uh this was a little bit more and more exciting i mean again the round that was um now at the end of April, beginning of, of, of May, uh, more or less everyone held serve. Ajax with a 3-0 win over Zwolle. Uh, we had uh, PSV uh, with a 4-2 over Willem Dwe and then Feyenoord 3-1 over Sittard. More, more or less it, this meant 1-2-3 are cemented. It was just about who is going 1 and who is going 2 and whether Ajax will flinch at that point. Interestingly though, um, big result for Sparta, 1-1 against AZ. We will see them... Um, Popping up for, 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 for the relegation battle. Uh, Willem Dwey losing, of, of course, and uh, Sittard uh, also losing. So um, Zwolle also losing. So although the, uh, 
there was a little bit movement on the bottom, but I, to me, especially when, when, when you look at, at, at the table after this round, uh, you see that Spartan was moving ahead of um, William Dway, but it got really, really tight. The seat is still in the valve, uh, more or less safe at that point. However, uh, especially for a title race, it really kicked into the next gear uh, on uh, the Sunday. And I fortunately watched all of it. AZ against Ajax. This was probably the last game where everyone thought, yeah, Ajax might, could stumble up there. And they almost did. They controlled the first half and took a late lead through Probe. And at that point, I was actually thinking, um, you know what? This Ajax team that we have now, it is very reminiscent. Not to the same level, but it's a rem release to, to the one for, of the mid 90s. They, they went to the Champions League final and then stayed in there. Could replace a little bit, a bit, a bit of Salem, but uh, it kept kind of falling apart. And this Ajax team reminds me that there's a little bit of that uh, core is still there, but the filling up is not as good. And now losing your coach as well, I really think that Ajax might be in for a tough. A tough CC season ahead, and uh, their uh, vulnerability was actually when Pavlidis uh, in the se uh, seventy second and Evian in the seventy fifth actually uh, turned the game around for AZ. At that point, a win of PSV against Feyenoord really would have uh, put the title race up for grabs, and uh, we would have gotten a, a, you know a sprint to the title. Um, however, uh, Edson Alvarez gets an equalizer in the 86th and Ajax was then really, really, really pressing to get the equal, uh, to get the winner, which never came. But I think uh, AZ really acquitted themselves and, and gave Ajax a great fight. These 2-2 meant that if PSV could have uh, won at Feyenoord, it would have only been two points. And that would have been very, very much up for grabs. And very quickly in, in, in the game, PSV was actually quite brilliant. And Hakbo uh, scoring two goals in the 16th and twi in, the, in, in the 29th, brilliantly played goals. And uh, there could have been even a third quite easy, 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 easily. At that point, you really thought the PSV, who in, who in that stadium just, um, was it a week prior or two weeks prior, won the Dutch Cup? Of course, I mean, the, the Kuiper was, uh, if, 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 if played there. But it was really, uh, it seemed the PSV is going to win that one easily. And it looked safe. It looked really safe. It looked like a title race is back on. Ajax have squandered it. And then uh, Dessas gets 1-2 uh, in the 86th. And then another one of those penalties. Yes, letter of the law, blah, blah, blah. It was a tough penalty. It was really a tough penalty in the 95th minute. Dessas gets an equalizer in a game that looked all PSV all along. And it would have been the best time for PSV to play Feyenoord because, you know, they had the European commitment in mid midweek. Yes, they were riding the high, but uh, in a campaign where I argue PSV lost those due to the scheduling of the European games that PSV was not in the Champions League. And if you've seen those qualification games against Benfica, PSV should have been in the Champions League, honestly. Um... They lost it because the two times they played Ajax, they had two days less preparation time than Ajax. Especially the first one, the 5 0, the, 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 the instruction was never a 5 0. It was just that PSV played on Thursday and Ajax played on a Tuesday. And I, the same thing was true for the return fixture. So, uh, in a way, the head to head was, uh, was heavily skewed towards Ajax. Again, I love Ajax and Ajax is my team in Holland, uh, maybe more so in, in the European context than in a national context. But um, I, it's Ajax that when I think Holland, for, 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 for me, it's all about Ajax. So I'm not unhappy that Ajax wins that one. However, I also feel that uh, PSV was a team that was right up there with Ajax in many ways. And those six points that Ajax got against PSV are the difference. And it seems a little bit weird that due to scheduling, this could not have, uh, it, it was, uh, the title was decided. And this is something where the schedule makers of uh, the Eredivisie really, really need to look at themselves. But as it stands, the two, two, twos meant that it was still a four point difference. And all that meant is that for uh, the Wednesday games who were all played at the same, at the same time, if Ajax winning against Herrenveen, they are champions. And of course they did.
Of course they did. They won rather easily 5-0. It was already 3-0 at the half to Talia Fico. A brilliantly played goal, but I think Talia Fico did not mean to shoot it. I mean, the way the ball went in. Berghoes uh, lost it in an Alea penalty to that he wins. Uh, the, he goes top of the scoring charts. And then laid on Probe and Alvarez make it a proper route for Herrenwein. So that was never, never went out. Uh, of course, uh, Feyenoord also winning. Of course, PSV winning as well. But I want to also look at the bottom. I, I, I skipped now over a few re results, but Sparta again with another win. 2-0 over Zwolle, who are now in, uh, who is in last place. William Dway, picking up points. Valwijk over Heracles. Her uh, Heracles have also previous round lost to William Dway. So uh, there's a lot of motion on the bottom, which very often happens. And if you look at the current standings, Sparta, who uh, just three weeks ago were at the bottom of the table. Yes, there was always the Svites game that they had won in, in there, but suddenly are out of the relegation zone and actually not so much uh, in danger. Heracles could potentially get relegated still, uh, but probably via the playoffs. If I look at it, uh, uh, William Dwey will not be able to catch him, but they could fall into the playoff spot. Sparta and Fortuna Sitter are just separated by goal difference, and it's rather decisive for Sparta. And then William Dwey could potentially catch Sitter as well and go into the relegation. So this is also quite exciting. On top, we already know um, Ajax PSV Champions League. Uh, that's decided. Feyenoord will go into Europa League. Uh, so it doesn't really matter whether they win the um, Conference League or not. And then we have a four-way playoff. And this is also already decided. 20 AZ, Vitesse and Utrecht. Vitesse actually really dropping off towards the end of, of the season. I remember they, they were up there. So uh, there will really be the playoff to decide for that uh, last spot. And we have only one round uh, in the Netherlands to play. And uh, already the promotion relegation playoffs are happening from the um, Erste Divisie. Uh, where whoever uh, goes out there will then play Willem uh, Dway. Um, so if we look at it, it would end with a Vitesse Ajax game. But uh, the only implication it has is to see is potentially a seeding whether Vitesse will play a Z or Twente. So uh, it doesn't have really any implications. So the one thing we have to look for is here relegation. And is Heracles against Sparta. Remember Heracles team that has been losing as of late quite a bit. Willem Dwey against Utrecht um, and seated at Nijmegen. <sighs> I think it's not inconceivable that Willem Dwey, it's tough, it's tough. I mean, Willem Dwey, Utrecht doesn't have much to play for because they're already safe. They will, uh, they could make it, they could catch Vitesse to get in a better slot, but you know. Gotta see, at the moment, I think the final table will be the final table, but uh, there could be a little bit in there as well. I don't know if I will do a video on these two leagues uh, next week or if I will wait after all the seasons have finished in France. We have two more rounds in the Netherlands. We have this final round, then we have the playoffs. So I might actually do a video in roughly two weeks time to uh, summarize then the end of the season. And maybe I would love to do a summary video for all the seasons uh, a little bit later on, but I have to see how it works out with uh, my schedule. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the happenings in these two countries. Uh, how excited about are, are you with Nantes and Ajax winning the titles? What do you think? How is the relegation going in these uh, leagues? And if you have to add anything, please do so in the comments below. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell. So in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.